webinar series where we showcase how Citrix and our partners have integrated uh, to deliver valuable products and solutions to common problems faced by our customers today. So speak about the Citrix Ready program. Citrix Ready is an end-to-end -end technology program which showcases and recommends third-party products, uh, solutions, and services that demonstrate compatibility with the Citrix products. The partners, uh, in order to verify the, their products, they undergo certain test scenarios which have been defined and in our new online uh, Citrix Ready verification platform. And once the products have been approved by the Citrix Ready team, they have been put on the Citrix Ready marketplace. And Citrix Ready marketplace is the place where customers can quickly and easily find the solutions rec recommended by Citrix. And you could navigate to citrixready.citrix.com and find all the Citrix Ready verified products there. So for more in information on the Citrix Ready program, please navigate to citrix.com slash partner programs slash Citrix Ready. So before we start the presentation, uh, if you have any questions during this webinar, please use the question panel on the right hand side and we will take your questions in the Q&A session at the end. If there are any questions that are left out unanswered during this webinar, we will be replying back to you via email. So please post your questions there. So without any further delay, please welcome Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, today I uh, just wanted to go over our agenda for today's session. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, VDI in the environment, both the use cases of video as well as the challenges people are experiencing, uh, the Citrix HDX technology and how it helps with optimizing video and in combination with the Kumu video optimization pack. And then uh, we'll go through our Pathfinder delivery technology, which leverages that instance to deliver a successful user experience uh, to the uh, virtualized users. And then uh, we'll open it up for some Q&A. As most of you know, the demand for video is saturating most businesses wide area networks um, it's rapidly increasing as uh, people become more and more comfortable with using video the number of use cases within the corporations that are having video applied to them is expanding and the amount of new video being generated is growing at a rapid pace as we those two issues occur, um, it really pushes video to become the potentially the most uh, significant impact on your WAN and your WAN's performance. And as we know, companies have very complex networks, they've got multiple technology vendors, and they need to be able to have a solution that they can put in place that works seamlessly with those various technology platforms to deliver a consistent and reliable uh, viewing experience. If we look at uh, some of the potential use cases, uh, you have the town hall or C-suite meetings. You have collaboration tools such as SharePoint and Jive. You have the social video portal applications. Um, as well as now we're seeing more and more growth of unified communications being integrated, uh, needing to be recorded and or live streamed. Uh, in, in addition, the use cases of sales training, customer service, employee onboarding, and marketing are only uh, growing more and more as companies realize the value of training through video versus some of the traditional written materials. As we, uh, as you look out at your solution set uh, for delivering video, you know, one of the important aspects is that you need to be able to deliver a video to a number of different audiences. And those audiences could be on a virtualized device, a desktop, a laptop, could be a secure um, tool um, for MDM or EMM, a BYOD situation where they've brought their mobile device to work, 
and then you have the advent of more and more digital signage applications within the organizations. And one of the important pieces to that is to be able to deliver video seamlessly to all those audiences without having to have multiple solutions to do so. Um, so if we look at some of the requirements, you know, the solution needs to be scalable. It has to provide a high availability solution. It uh, also needs to be able to take content from a wide variety of resources, uh, and collaboration, web conferencing, uh, video conferencing, external feeds, uh, and studios, and screen recorders. That's just a small example of the possible sources um, beyond the simple uh, mobile type uh, uploads. As you look at that uh, video being generated, you need to be able to set rules uh, and uh, or both site specific, user specific, device specific, and audience uh, so that you can deliver based on where they are, what the connectivity is at that site, who they are, and what they're watching it on the most optimal viewing experience. On top of that, it needs to be integrated into the standard corporate security infrastructure so it does not become a maintenance nightmare to keep all your users uh, you know, under uh, correct uh, security rules. Um, on top of that, uh, as you look at things, uh, you need to be able to start to deal with retention policies and regulatory policies related to that content being generated. So just as we saw in the advent of the document management systems, uh, video being even much larger, the need for time of life, uh, access controls, um, destruct policies based on um, regulatory rules all need to be part of this solution. And then uh, on top of it, user portability is critical to success because different users are going to be accessing the from different devices in different places and that uh, the solution needs to be able to adjust uh, at a moment's notice for those uh, changes occurring. If we look at the virtualized desktop infrastructure, most of the uh, major corporations out there at least have 10% of their users on VDI. We're uh, expecting to see a pretty significant growth uh, compounded annually here of almost 30% by 2020. Uh, BYOD is becoming a bigger and bigger issue for the corporate infrastructure and um, video delivery and the infrastructure that allows that is a, a component that has not always been thought of as a central issue um, in, in the organization. And um, on top of that, as part of that delivery, you need to be able to support the latest codecs and technology so that the video is the most efficient size and data rate wise while still delivering the best possible quality. Uh, and understanding that your IT capabilities related to that versus the audience you're trying to reach and making sure that the quality of communications are there is critical. Uh, with that, I'd like to have David uh, uh, dive into uh, our particular solution around the uh, Citrix uh, Zen App and Zen Desktop technologies. David? Great. Thank you, Jim. And um, welcome, everyone, to the webinar. Um, so I will go into more of a technical side and architectural side of um, how Kuma addresses the challenges of uh, delivering video to VDI endpoints. So as Jim described um, earlier in his presentation, um, there are definitely challenges in delivering quality streaming video to VDI endpoints. And our goal at Coolum is to enable video delivery to any user device on any network with the best quality possible and without overloading the network. And this, of course, includes uh, VDI endpoints. But before describing Kumu solution for VDI, I would like to um, start with reminding you 
about the built-in Citrix options and capabilities for optimizing streaming video delivery. So if no optimization methods are used whatsoever, then uh, videos are played back on the server side, on the um, Zen server side where the browser is running. So the constantly changing video images are sent over the ICA channel like any other virtual desktop images. But because the frames in video are changing so rapidly, the amount of data that goes over the um, ICA channel is very high and the load on the client to uh, display rapidly changing frames is also very high. The result is that the playback has very poor quality, the Zen server CPU has very high utilization because it is the one that's doing all the video rendering and then the network is overloaded with uh, basically screen scraping data sent over the um, ICA channel. Our next slide, Jim, please. Oh. Thank you. Um, so to address this uh, problem, um, Citrix uh, provided um, HGX I'm sorry, we are having a little bit of a problem with slides. Um, it's a one slide above it. Sorry. Thanks. This one? Sure. Uh, yep. Yep. Okay, to address sorry. this problem, um, Citrix provides HGX media stream technology with media redirection. It basically has two modes of operation, the client-side media fetching and, uh, and using the server-side fetching. In client-side fetching, the video is pulled by and rendered by a player residing on the client. No media is flowing through, uh, through an um, ICA channel and the server is pretty much free from processing any media. So client-server fetching provides the best video quality and puts the least load on the Zen server and the ICA channel. In server-side fetching, the media is pulled by the server and then the video stream in its compressed form is sent over the ICA channel over to the client for playback. So while uh, there is still load on the server and the ICA channel, it is still much more efficient than sending uh, imaging or screen scrapes over the channel, right? Um, so um, um, Citrix, Citrix has two implementations of uh, media redirection in, in the HGX technology. It's flash redirection and Windows Media redirection. Both implementations come with certain requirements for endpoints and also have some limitations. So flash redirection obviously requires a flash player on the client side. Um, it is often just not available because of the OS composition or seen presenting security <coughs> vulnerability. It also has somewhat challenging uh, policy configuration and monitoring and so under certain network conditions uh, client-side fetching is uh, basically silently switched off uh, during the session. Windows Media Redirection requires use of uh, Windows Media Streaming uh, format and protocols and Windows Media Player. Um, these are outdated products and services and they're not supported by Microsoft anymore. And because legacy Flash and Windows Media Players are used for, play, uh, for playback, um, there are also limitations on the codecs, formats, and protocols. And as a result, many modern and widely used protocols are not uh, supported at all. Um, and next slide, please. Um, so, when we at Kumu decided to develop our own solution for video in VDI, uh, we had several goals in mind. Uh, we wanted to extend uh, formats and protocols and include more modern formats, especially for live streaming and certainly, in, in, in particular, include uh, multicast support uh, for live. We wanted to remove dependency on the Flash and Windows Media Player. We wanted to use uh, 
uh, client fetching by default because it provides the most the most optimized uh, experience and do it without any config needing any configuration on the Citrix side. So the result of this development is the Kumo video optimization pack. We call it QVAP in short. So I will be using that abbreviation, QVAP. And it was designed by, um, or it was designed together with Citrix, and then we implemented it at Kumo. And it was released uh, last year and is uh, fully supported uh, by Kumo as, as a product. QVAP now supports the formats and protocols that are commonly used for video streaming in the enterprise. And in, in particular for video on demand, it supports MP4 and HLS uh, formats and containers. And for live streaming, it supports RTSP unicast with H.264 codec, as well as the standard-based RTP multicast with H.264 codec. So it's not Microsoft uh, multicast, proprietary multicast, but standard RTP used with uh, H.264. QVAP is integrated with the rest of the Kumo platform uh, for video content management and for portal access. It works with the Kumo Video Delivery Solution that we call Pathfinder, and we'll look at it uh, at that technology in a couple of minutes. And next slide, next slide, please. Um, so as I mentioned before, QVAP's primary mode of operation is based on client fetching, and it means that the videos received and rendered uh, by the endpoint, by the client. So as a result, uh, the Zen server CPU is not utilized for video processing, and Zen server outbound network connection is not used by video traffic, because again, uh, video is received directly uh, by the client. So the screenshots above um, show the CPU levels in the playback um, session. So on the left side, it shows that uh, the player on the endpoint is doing all the hard work, doing all the processing, and the CPU is at about 9%. And on the right side, it shows that the, the server CPU, and specifically for the browser process that runs uh, or kind of visually embeds the player, the uh, CPU level is only at 3.7%, again, because the um, the server doesn't do much of a work as far as, or any work actually, as far as video is concerned. And similar diagrams for network traffic basically shows the same, the same idea that uh, the network is used by, uh, by the client and the ICA channel is pretty much free from uh, delivering any video. And let's move to the next. So let's take a brief look at actually how Kumo solution is uh, is deployed. So the one and only component that Kumo provides is the QVAP player uh, that is deployed on the VDA side on a Zen desktop or Zen app server. So that's the one which is in dark blue on the left side. Um, it is implemented as an ActiveX control um, and it is initiated by a piece of JavaScript code um, in a browser page. There are no special requirements for player on the Zen server side. It's basically just a, a DLL, ActiveX control, that um, has to be installed there and registered. On the client or endpoint side, besides a Citrix receiver, we also need a video rendering, uh, a, a set of video rendering modules or plugins. On Windows endpoints, we recommend deployment of open source um, LAV or LAV filters. It's spelled L-A-V. And on Linux, um, it is GStreamer plugins uh, that are typically included with uh, any Linux distribution, although we recommend a few additional uh, plugins for better codecs uh, support. 
And um, that's pretty much all about how it's deployed. It's really uh, pretty straightforward. And next slide. So up until um, this point, we have looked at how the stream is rendered in the VDI environment. Now let's take a brief look at how streams are delivered uh, to the endpoints uh, from a source of a video to uh, to the endpoint. And here, um, um, and here is where the Kumo delivery technology that we call Pathfinder comes into into view. In very simplistic terms, a Kumo Pathfinder is a software-based enterprise CDN. In reality, it is actually much more than just a delivery network. It is a very highly configurable rules-based um, service that on, not only includes uh, video delivery and controls video delivery, but it also selects the right content format, a protocol, and a bitrate uh, for every device that requests a video at, at runtime. And again, it's, it's, it's fully rule-based rule and configurable. It's not based on something that is hard-coded. It's, it's fully configurable. On a, in a price network, Pathfinder ensures that each device gets its stream from the nearest streaming source, ideally on the same LAN for which uh, it uses, the Pathfinder uses a proximity service. And uh, next, please. Um, the actual delivery delivery of video content from uh, from its source to any device um, on the enterprise network is handled by Kumu Video Net Edges. So Video Net Edges are streaming and caches uh, and, and caching uh, software services that are deployed um, on the enterprise network on the intranet. Um, end user players are directed, directed by Pathfinder to a nearest video net edge on the network, ideally on the LAN. Video on demand files are cached by video, uh, video net edge after the first user plays them. So the second user gets it uh, from cache and not uh, getting it over the WAN. Live streams are split to all users, so only, only one stream is incoming into VideoNet Edge, and then it it is split split by VideoNet Edge, and it feeds tens and hundreds of users connected to it, thus saving uh, all the bandwidth on the on the one side. And the next slide. Um, so. And I also wanted to mention that obviously, if it's multicast, then it receives it directly from the from the multicast source. Um, so QVAP and Pathfinder work together to deliver video to VDI endpoints. Pathfinder recognizes that the video is requested by the QVAP player, and it uses the endpoint IP to locate the nearest VideoNet edge, and then the stream then flows from that nearest video net edge to each endpoint and uh, um, that the endpoint is directed or requests uh, from that video net edge. If the webcast is delivered via multicast, then the local video net edge serves as a multicast source uh, with all the endpoints on the LAN receiving video over multicast from that uh, video net edge. So that's pretty much all I wanted to uh, uh, to talk about as far as the uh, technicalities or mechanics, if you will, of the um, Kumo QVAP um, technology. So um, over to you, Jim, for closing statements. Thank you, David. Yes. Um, so I think uh, you know, as you heard from David here, we have a solution that uh, addresses. Uh, uh, a specific user audience, i.e. the VDI. And as uh, usual, uh, Kumu has uh, done a significant effort with the uh, uh, partner, in this case Citrix, to engineer um, the best possible solution to support that audience. But beyond supporting that audience, off that 
our infrastructure. Um, as David mentioned, when you have a V&E in a particular location, that V&E can ser service all those different audiences from that same V&E in that location. So it's not just the virtualized users, it's not just the mobile users or the desktop users, it's all the different audience and user types. And, uh, and that uh, makes it a very easy system to deploy because once you set it and forget it, uh, it allows all your different applications for video to be fed and delivered off of one set of infrastructure and that is secure, that incorporates rules uh, and both network as well as like retention policies in one complete solution. And that's really what we're bringing to bear here um, for your benefit. Uh, I guess uh, now why don't we take some questions from the audience. Uh, uh, David, if you'd like to answer the first couple. Hi. So thanks for this wonderful presentation. Thanks, Jim and David, for this. Uh, let's just move to the Q&A session, and I have a couple of questions here with me uh, from the audience. So the first one is, how difficult is it to install the Cubo VDI player? How big is it? Sure, I'll take this one. Um, so the the Kumi Video Player, as I described before, is a um, is an ActiveX control that is deployed on the server side. It's basically one and only component that is deployed on the server side, and it's a it's a relatively small piece. It's a single DLL file, and I think its size is about four four megabyte, and that's. And, and we provide an installer for it. So you just run an installer, and it just installs and registers registers that DLL. That's pretty much all. Okay, great. The next one follows. Are there any Cubo created and Cubo supported components required on the endpoints? All right, that, that's a great question. That complements the the previous one. So again, as I described. There are no Kumu components on the uh, on the client side, on the endpoint side. Nothing that uh, Kumu provides. Um, and as I said, uh, there are some requirements. There are some libraries that uh, we expect, or require, or recommend to to be present on the endpoint. They're not provided by Kumu. They're either open source or, in the case of uh, uh, Linux, um, could uh, are provided again either open source or or via a third party, um, it's a commonly used uh, set of GStreamer codecs. Again, no Kum components, but some open source uh, components on the on the endpoint. Okay, great, great to know that. So the next one is: Is video usage data collected when users access video from virtual endpoints, or is this data available for analytics? Um, yes, yes, it, it is available. Um, it's fully available. Like um, it's the same as VDI, no VDI endpoints. Just to give you a brief flavor of why it's happening, all the controls actually happening in the browser. You know, start, stop, load, player. It's all that the browser does, and in the Kumu player implementation, all those events and controls are um, basically events are sent to the uh, content management and portal application for further processing and for uh, creating all uh, analytical, um, analytical reports. And also the browser also gets the state of the player and again that information is also sent back to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the portal application for analytics. Okay, thanks. All right, it looks like we're out of time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we have a few more questions that, uh, as mentioned earlier, we could take it up via email. Okay, or do you, do you want to take up one more question, David or Jim? Um, uh, yeah, I'm looking at, uh, and all right, so there's a question about which browsers will uh, this work on. Um, so basically, any browser on the server side then that can um, um, that can uh, host the ActiveX uh, control, 
um, will be suitable for, for that implementation. And, you know, obviously IE can do it in Chrome you know, or various uh, versions of Chrome can do it. So any browser that can host the uh, executive control um, can use that technology. Thanks, David. So before we wrap up, um, do you have anything to mention, David or Jim? Um, I, I think um, we'll, we'll address some other questions. I think um, I see one or two more questions that will probably take more time, but uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and address the, those over email or in private conversations, which are very much open to, uh, to engage in any conversations and quick uh, question and answers. Yes, definitely, definitely. And because we are running out of time and keeping the time in Indra, so let's let's answer those via email. Great, so it was a wonderful presentation. Thanks, David, and thanks, Jim. So with that said, we are about to end this webinar. Thank you all for attending today's webinar in this Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series. This concludes our broadcast. Thank you. Thank you.